Hello everyone, welcome to my studio and my art channel. My name is Mark Kompanietz and I'm a professional artist, an art professor, and a fountain pen addict. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite category of pens, the pocket pen. I've amassed quite a collection of them over the years, so my plan is to show them to you, talk about why I think they're so useful, and then give you my recommendations for what pocket pens you should buy. And though I use fountain pens almost exclusively for drawing, this video will also be useful to those very strange people that actually use fountain pens to write. Let's get started. For those not familiar with pocket pens, it simply refers to a pen that's on the shorter end of the spectrum. How short exactly? Well, it ranges. So for instance, this Twisby Minivac really isn't much shorter than a Pilot Metropolitan, a pen most people consider to be full size. And then it goes all the way down to this little tiny Kaweco Lilliput. The main thing this category of pens have in common is that all of them take advantage of posting, the ability to stick the cap onto the back of the pen to add length. So while a pen might appear short when capped, it becomes almost equal in length to a full size pen when posted. Now, before I show you my pen collection, I think we must answer a really important question. Why pocket pens? What is the advantage of having a smaller pen? Other than being extremely cute, the advantage is simply that they can go where regular sized fountain pens can't, such as the name indicates a pocket. I love carrying art supplies everywhere I go and have a bunch of art kits put together for every occasion. But there are situations where all you can bring is just a pen, and that pen should be small enough and ideally sturdy and drip free enough to be jostled around in the pocket of your pants. Furthermore, artists that like to work outside of their studios often need to carry a lot of stuff, and a small pen that fits into art cases that are already bursting with supplies is very useful. Pocket pens also pair well with other diminutive supplies, small sketch palettes and sketchbooks, allowing you to put together a super compact sketching kit. And best of all, while there's often a sacrifice of comfort and functionality when using other compact supplies, for the most part, no such decrease in ease of use happens with pocket pens. In short, they're short. They go everywhere, and as a plus, they're super cute. Here are all the pocket pens in my collection. Some of these, such as the Kaweco Sport Brass and the Kaweco Lilliput in Copper, have been with me for some time, and I've even made detailed reviews of them. Others are new, but have been used long enough that I can make an informed opinion. I think we're going to start with the smallest, or at least the shortest of these pens, and work our way up. This is the Moonman Wankai. The Moonman Wankai measures just under 3.5 inches long, and it doesn't get much longer when posted, coming in a little over 4 and 3 quarter inches. This is a very light all plastic pen that also comes in a few kinds of very nice looking plastics. However, I went for the less attractive clear version, and so should you, because knowing how much ink you have in an eyedropper pen is really important, because they have a tendency to burp when the ink levels are low. However, so far this pen hasn't suffered from issues commonly found in eyedroppers. In fact, I've been carrying it around in my pocket for a few weeks without a single drop in the cap. As for ergonomics, this pen is well balanced and has a fairly comfortable grip section. My only gripe is this step from the section to the body, which your fingers catch against. For me this is annoying, since I tend to slide my fingers up and down the body when I draw and prefer pens without much change of girth from the grip section to the barrel. The only real downside is that this pen uses a Moonman nib, which, consistent with my other reviews of Moonman pens, is garbage, very scratchy and dry. Let's take this nib through my standardized three-part test. In my first test, I'm testing for consistency under pressure. Most pens will put down a line, but only a well-tuned nib will put down lines when those lines are put down very fast. This nib actually performed a little bit better than the other Moonman nibs I've tried, but that's really not saying all that much. You can see how inconsistent it is when I put down very fast strokes. In terms of line variation, it actually fared fairly well for a non-flex nib. It produces a slight degree of line variation, being slightly more flexible than a standard number 6 Yovo nib. As a reverse writer, it didn't work at all, however. I would give this pen about a 2.5 in terms of flexibility. Not quite a soft nib, but definitely not something very stiff. In the test for feedback, it turned out to be very scratchy and in all directions. This wasn't a question of misaligned tines or any problem with the nib, so this pen could easily be smoothed out. But smoothing can sometimes make nib even less consistent, so don't think every pen can be corrected by running it a few times against a micro mesh. The last test is left deliberately vague, but is called the line precision test. 
it's intended to cover all the little things that make a pen a pleasure to work with. Your ability to control the lines, its responsiveness to angle and pressure and speed. Sometimes this test is a quick doodle, and sometimes it's a more extended drawing. Either way, in this case, the nib lived up to its extremely low expectations. Fortunately, this nib is number 5, which means you can easily pull it out and replace it with any number of high-quality options, such as the ones made by Yovo. Since I have a bunch of spare Yovo nibs laying around, I didn't have to buy a replacement, but that's something you should probably factor into the cost of this pen, because you're definitely going to want to replace the original nib. So, even though the original nib is pretty crappy, this is a useful pen, which, despite its tiny size, sacrifices neither ink capacity or comfort. I think it would be really useful for people that need something very small and inexpensive, but still want their ink capacity. So, while I'm still very wary of most Moonman products, this one has my full recommendation. Next up is a pen I've already reviewed in detail, the Kaweco Lily Put in the Copper Finish. While it touched longer than the Moonman Wankai, being at about 3 and 3 quarter inches, it's much thinner. It comes in a few other metal materials such as brass, aluminum, and steel, the cheapest being aluminum and the most expensive being steel with a very pretty blue fire treatment. Like the Wankai, it posts very securely with a screw on cap, ending up at about 5 inches long. The slimness of this pen allows you to put it in lots of places, and I love pairing it with a tiny palette like this in a compact case. The ergonomics of it, however, aren't ideal, and I think the main issue isn't the girth or length of the pen, but rather the slickness of this metal grip section. If it had some texture on the grip, it would fix the issue, but at the moment it's just too slick for comfort and makes me tense my fingers more than necessary to maintain control, which leads to strain over time. That said, it's fine for shorter sketches, which is what it's really designed for. Besides the slipperiness of the grip section, the other drawback is that it uses a short international cartridge, which has very little ink capacity. That issue could be fixed, however, if you make this little squeeze converter out of a few simple materials that can easily be acquired online. If you want to see a tutorial on how this little squeeze converter is made, you can see my full review of the Kaweco Lilliput. Now, of course, you can always carry additional ink cartridges, which really isn't that big a deal. Let's take the nib on this pen through its paces with my four-part test. Since I have a different nib in this pen at the moment, which we'll talk about in a second, I'm going to use a Kaweco Sport, which has an identical nib in it, for the tests. Let's see how it performs. I found that Kaweco nibs are pretty reliable. In the speed hatch test, you can see that it puts down a line at any speed and every direction. In case you think that's pretty common, compare that to the previous Moonman nib. In the line variation test, these nibs tend not to perform well. These small Kaweco nibs, which I believe are made by the nib manufacturer Bach, are pretty stiff, even stiffer than their Yovo counterparts. In reverse writing, this pen doesn't function at all. This pen falls on 1.5 on my flex scale, not quite completely stiff as a Platinum Preppy. In the feedback test, these pens score well, considering that they're very fine, with pleasant feedback common to fine nibs like this. And on the wetness test, this pen falls on the drier side, which is fine, because for a drawing, a pen that's very wet just isn't something that you want. In the line precision test, this nib also performed well. Kaweco nibs are quite precise and dry, so if you're looking for a pen that will allow you to work light and build up your values gradually through fine hatching, this is the pen for you. Even though the steel nib that came with this pen is just so-so, what's great about the Lilliput is that it's one of the very few modern pens that can use a number two sized gold vintage nib. These nibs are absolutely superior to just about anything made today and can be bought for as little as $30. This pen is fitted with just such a nib, and this combo of vintage nib with a super sturdy pen body is perfect. But even with the standard nib, I think this is a useful pen. Its slimmer profile makes it an even better fit than the Moonman Wankai for compact kits, and this all metal body actually looks better the more it's scratched and abused, so feel free to take this pen and throw it into your pocket along with your pocket knife and your keys. Next up in size is the Pilot Petite. This is the cheapest pen in this review, retailing at around $6, and also by far the flimsiest, made of thin, cheap feeling injection molded plastic. Unposted, it's a little over 4 inches, and posts to a length of 5 and a quarter inches. In terms of ergonomics, it's uncomfortable, with a straight, slippery section, and an annoying step-up in girth at the barrel. 
I'm pretty forgiving when it comes to sections, but this one I just couldn't get used to. Furthermore, the grip further down the barrel is also uncomfortable, being too slick and with an annoying taper towards the back end of the pen. Okay, let's take this nib out for a test. In terms of consistency of line, this pen does just fine, which is great considering that it costs six bucks. I also find that these pens do a fine job of not drying out and will work even after being left unused for some time. In terms of line variation, don't expect much. This nib is super stiff, about the same as a Platinum Preppy. However, it's also a reliable reverse writer, putting down a line that's closer to an extra fine. So, in terms of line variation, this one gets a whopping 0.5. As for feedback, it's relatively smooth for a fine nib and in the wetness test on the wetter side. Overall, a boring but well-behaved nib that'll be good for most sketching purposes. As for the line precision test, which, let's face it, is basically a doodle, it also performed well. This nib puts down a very consistent, almost unalterable line that's not terribly exciting, but if you don't need anything special in your nib, this is something that will be perfectly satisfying. Other than the unpleasant ergonomics, the main issue with this pen is the paltry incapacity. It's tiny, and the cartridges are unfortunately proprietary, which is definitely a drawback. Since this pen has a solid plastic barrel and no metal parts in the section, it can be eyedroppered, but given the flimsy feel of the plastic, would I risk eyedropping this pen and putting it in my pocket? Not a chance. But the good thing is that the nib is smooth and reliable, and that this is a pen that writes every time, gives you no problems either in performance or with your finances. So if you're looking for something super compact and super cheap, this pen is not a bad option. But I would save up a little and opt for a slightly more durable pen. Going up significantly in weight, if not in size, are these two very popular pocket pens, the Kaweco Sports. This iteration of the Kaweco Sport has been around since 1995, comes in every color of plastic imaginable, and in every metal finish other than uranium, though that's probably in development. The popularity of this pen is understandable, and I have detailed reviews of them, but to summarize, it has a unique, attractive design, and is ergonomically quite pleasant. The pen measures a little over 4 inches capped, and extends to a comfortable 5 inches. Furthermore, because the cap posts so deeply, the balance on these pens, even though they're heavy, is excellent. The incapacity on these is pretty poor, but again, carrying extra cartridges around isn't such a burden. And if you go to my detailed review of the Koeko Brass, I'll show you how to make this squeeze converter, which more than doubles the incapacity. The nibs of these are exactly the same as the one on the lily put, so I'm not going to give you a test. But to summarize, they put down a very thin, consistent line, are pretty stiff, and nothing particularly special. But, like the lily put, these nibs can be easily switched out with something a whole lot better. On the black aluminum version, I have a semi-flex nib from a company called FP Nibs, which I'm glad to report they're still making. The brass version has a semi-flex vintage nib in it. Both these nibs work really great, and I highly recommend them. By the way, the plastic versions of these, which are significantly cheaper than the metal versions, can be eye chopper, increasing the incapacity quite a lot. I suppose I'll eventually get one and try it, but for now I love the weight and durability of these two Kaweco ALs, the one in aluminum and the one in brass, and the fact that their nibs are so easily swappable, and most of all the fact that they can be tossed in your pocket with your keys and be just fine. My love of the Kaweco brass and the Lilliput have led me to explore one other Kaweco pocket pen option, the Kaweco Supra, which, like the Sport, also comes in a variety of attractive metal finishes. You actually have the option to use this as a full-size pen. It comes with this little extender. Which turns this pen into something resembling a self-defense baton more than a fountain pen. As a pocket pen, however, it's a touch shorter than the Sport when capped being a little over three and three quarter inches, and then posted coming in at about five and a quarter inches. The ergonomics of this pen are not as nice as the Koeko Sport. The shape of this section is comfortable enough, but what I dislike is the sharpness of the threading, though to be fair, it's not quite as sharp as it was when I first bought the pen. Mostly what I dislike is the slickness of the grip section. 
While it has a very slight micro etching on the surface, it's considerably more slippery, and because of the heaviness of the pen, it gives you the impression that it's going to slip out of your fingers at any moment. And though that hasn't happened, that's a pretty irritating feeling that makes you grip the pen harder, leading to hand strain. As with the Quaco Sport and the Lilliput, the ink capacity with the short international cartridges is tiny. And as with the Lilliput, it cannot be used with Quaco's little converter. But again, all that means is that you have to carry some extra cartridges around with it. What's great about the Supra, and it's actually an advantage over the Sport, is that this pen uses a standard number 6 nib, which allows you to swap it out for a huge number of other nib options. While that was my initial plan, it turned out that the original fine nib on the Supra was actually very good, with a smooth tip and a bit of bounce that allows for some line variation. Let's take this nib out for a test drive and see just how it performs. This is a very reliable nib, putting down a line every time regardless of speed or angle. I've heard other reviewers complain about Koweikos, that they often come with problems, but I certainly haven't experienced it. In the line variation test, this pen really surprised me. It has a pleasant bounce to it, and puts down a fair amount of line variation for a non-flex nib. What's more, it's also a reliable reverse writer, putting down an extra fine line. I love flex nibs, and usually like more line variation than this, but this one's still quite nice, registering at a whopping 3, making it a legitimate soft nib. In the feedback test, it also does well. Nothing glass smooth, but with just enough of feedback to let you know you're making contact with the paper. As for wetness, it's a little bit on the wetter side than other Coecos. In the Precision Doodle, it proved itself to be a very pleasant nib to work with, putting down a very noticeable line variation and showing itself to be very responsive to delicate changes in pressure. Even though, as I mentioned, the ergonomics of this pen are less than perfect, the weight does contribute to slowing down your hand, which I think is a very good thing if you're trying to rush things or feeling jittery. Despite the pleasantness of the nib and the fact that you can easily switch it out with many other nib options, I don't find myself reaching for the Supra all that often. Perhaps other finishes of this pen are not quite as slippery, but I don't think I'll be getting another version. So far, I've only covered modern pens, so you might be asking, what about vintage options? Well, I actually have quite a few vintage pocket pens, or pens small enough to be called that. For example, this very excellent Pelican 140, or the Parker Jackknife Safety, or the Eversharp Skyline Demi, this is the half size or the smaller size, or this Mont Blanc Monte Rosa, or this more safety pen, all of which are considerably smaller than most modern full-size pens. Here's a comparison of these pens with the Pilot Metropolitan. Vintage pens often outperform their modern descendants, especially when it comes to flex, and I adore them. But if you're looking for a portable pen to stick in your pocket and carry around in very rough conditions, you should avoid them. Vintage pens are fragile and should be treated with care. Furthermore, there's a reason why people used to wear pocket protectors. Most of these pens have a tendency to drip ink into the cap if not stored completely upright. The only vintage pen in my collection that I would carry with complete confidence is this more safety pen, which has an unusual design that completely seals off the ink when capped. But this pen is a precious antique that took patience and expense to acquire, and I wouldn't dare mistreat it. The only vintage pen, or sort of vintage pen, I, rec I would recommend is this one. This is the Pilot Elite Pocket Pen, and it just barely sneaks into the vintage category, with most of these being manufactured in the 1970s. This is a very popular design at the time, and similar versions of this pen were made both by Platinum and Sailor. Here is a Platinum version that is very, very similar to the Pilot Elite. These pens are quite small when capped, at around 4.5 inches, and have a very long snap cap that slides smoothly onto the back, giving you a comfortable length of five and a half inches. This pen is quite slender and doesn't have a grip section, and because of this, I worried that it would be too slippery to work with comfortably, but this turned out not to be the case. This pen is very comfortable to hold, and I love the fact that it's more or less uniform in length, allowing me to easily slide my fingers up and down the pen when I draw. But the best thing about this pen is that it has a wonderful 14K nib that is wonderfully smooth with a touch of line variation. 
Considering that these pens are frequently found for around $40 and quite often under that, this makes the Pilot Elite one of the cheapest ways to get yourself a pen with a gold nib. Okay, let's subject this nib to our four tests. In the speed hatching test, it performed perfectly, which is remarkable in a nib with such a fine line. My experience has been that the finer the nib, the drier and less consistent the line. But I find that this nib is equally fine, juicy, and consistent. As for line variation, it does have a touch of it, but not much, equivalent to most of the pilot's gold non-flex options. It is a reliable reverse rider, however, putting down an incredibly thin, extra, extra fine line. I would say that this pen falls somewhere in the high twos in terms of line variation. Not quite truly a soft nib like the Pilot Custom 74 Soft Fine, but not bad. In the feedback department, it does very well. A very smooth nib considering its fineness. This might be because, other than the fact that Pilot nibs are excellent, this pen has a fairly generous flow which has a lubricating effect. Which leads me to the wetness test, where it shows itself to be very wet, again, for such a fine nib. In the line precision doodle, the Pilot Elite proved to be a terrific pen to work with. Perhaps because it follows the very cumbersome Supra, this pen feels like it glides across the paper, encouraging speed and expression. But regardless of what pen it follows, the combination of a slender body, but a solid comfortable grip, its lightness without feeling insubstantial, make this a perfect drawing tool if you don't care about having too much line variation. Unlike the Pilot Petite, which uses comically tiny cartridges, this pen can use the full-size Pilot cartridge, which offers very decent ink capacity. By the way, if you want to get fancy, there are also very attractive and highly sought-after versions of this pen with silver bodies. But if you plan to abuse this pen by tossing it into your pocket and taking it everywhere, I recommend the simple all-black plastic version. This is an absolute reliable little gem that you can treat horribly without guilt, and it won't drip all over you. Working up in size, we're entering a muddy area where you have pens that could be considered pocket pens or could be considered shorter full-size pens. Here's another, this time modern pen made by Pilot, the Pilot Prera. What can I say about it? This is a no frills, perfectly boring, but perfectly functional pen. It's four and three quarters inches capped, and then posted, it goes up to about five and a quarter inch. This is a very light pen with a decent balance to it that has a snap cap that slides on and off with a very satisfying click. And it also posts very securely. The grip section is a touch slick, but I don't feel like I'm about to lose control of the pen like I would, like I would with a Koweco Supra. This has a steel nib in it that again is very functional, smooth and stiff, putting down a fine line. Let's take it for a spin with my four tests. Like all Pilot nibs, gold or steel, this nib is perfectly consistent at all speeds and directions. Pilot steel nibs are for some reason slightly wider than their gold equivalents. Not sure why they do that, but I find that a Pilot gold fine nib is closer to an extra fine by western standards, whereas their steel fine nibs are sometimes closer to fine or even push towards medium. As for flex, like all Pilot steel nibs, it has next to none, but is a fairly dependable reverse rider. For line variation, I give this about a 2, but really it's probably around a 1.8. Like all Pilot steel nibs, this one is relatively smooth with just a touch of feedback. Pilot gold nibs tend to be much smoother than their steel nibs. As for wetness, this pen is slightly wetter than the Pilot Elite, which again is consistent with Pilot steel nibs, which usually write wetter than their gold counterparts. In the line precision doodle, the prayer performed quite well. It's actually a very pleasant pen to work with. It's light, becomes part of your hand easily, and does what you ask it to do, so long as you don't ask it for line variation. The Prairie either takes cartridges or one of the two pilot converters, the Con 20 or the Con 40, both horrible. Again, there's nothing interesting about this pen, but if you're looking for something that's light, small, and writes every single time, then go for it. Just don't pay full price for this thing, which nowadays is something like $59, because it can be found much cheaper on eBay for under 30 bucks. Up next is a way more interesting pen, at least in my opinion, the Twisby Mini. This pen is about four and three quarters capped and posts very securely with threading in the back to become five and a half inches. Ergonomically, it's pretty good, a little bit back heavy, and my only complaint is that the metal grip section here is a little bit slick, but you never feel like you're losing control over the pen. 
I really like that the barrel is similar in width to the grip section, so you can easily slide your fingers up and down. But one of the great things about the Mini, and its main advantage over all of the other pens I've shown you so far, is that it's a piston filler, which provides with excellent ink capacity. This pen uses a Yovo number 4 size nib, which is very reliable. Unfortunately, this is also an unusual size, which prevents you from switching it out with other nib options. That said, in this pen I have a gold nib made by Yovo, which was given a semi-flex grind by Gino Salarino of the Custom Nib Lab. Here are the four tests using the original steel Yovo nib. These nibs are some of the best steel nibs you can get, often found on expensive boutique brands such as Franklin Christoph. They're perfectly consistent at all speeds and directions, and I rarely encounter problems with them. These nibs usually have a touch of balance, giving you a little bit of line variation. In fact, they tend to be more flexible with time, though perhaps that's my imagination. For the most part, they tend not to be reliable reverse riders. On the flex scale, they rate at about a 2.5. In the feedback test, you can expect a Yovo Fine nib to have a pleasant pencil-like feedback, not as smooth as the nibs made by Pilot. As for the wetness test, this really depends on the pen you use it with, but in this Twisby, it runs fairly dry. Yovo nibs are some of my favorite nibs to draw with, and I use them frequently, particularly in my Twisby Ecos. They feel very precise and responsive, and I love that I can tease out a touch of line variation when I need it. This is a great pen that I like a lot, but even though it's called the Mini, it starts to press against the boundaries of what can be called a pocket pen. While it does fit into a pocket, this isn't a pen that can go places a regular pen can't. The other thing is that I'm starting to see a little bit of cracking here in the cap threads. This pen hasn't seen all that much use, so this is pretty disappointing. Twisbees do have reputations for cracking, but I haven't seen it until recently. Now I'm starting to see it in many of my Twisby pens. I'm willing to tolerate it in my Ecos since they're fairly inexpensive and the cracking is minor, but this pen is what's called mid-range at around $50, and you would think the quality of the plastic would be better. Here's another similarly sized pen made by one of my favorite companies, Opus 88. This is the Fantasia. This pen is four and three quarter inches capped, and when posted with threading on the back, measures five and three quarter inches. The fun, colorful, and unique look of this pen might distract from the fact that it's actually a very well designed, practical drawing tool. The ergonomics are pretty good, though the section is smaller than I'd like, and the pen, when posted, is ever so slightly back heavy due to this metal piece in the cap. The good thing about this pen is that it features one of my favorite filling mechanisms. It's an eyedropper with a knob in the back that allows you to seal off the main ink reservoir. This gives this pen the huge ink capacity of an eyedropper without any of the dripping and burping, and allows you to safely fly with a pen. Number 5 steel Yovo nibs perform identically to number 4 Yovo nibs in the Twisby Mini, so I don't have much to say here other than Yovo steel nibs are really the gold standard. Besides being super consistent and fun to draw with, they also have the advantage of coming in a huge range of sizes and are also easily customizable, so you can get them ground to extra 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 fine, turned into Fude nibs, Architect, Zoom, even Flex nibs, really anything you want. A number of great companies sell customized Yovo nibs and can easily be found online. So far I've ordered custom nibs from the Toronto Pen Company, which I believe only work with number 6 Yovo nibs, and from FP Nibs, a company out of Spain that does work not only on number 5 and number 6 Yovo nibs, both steel and gold, but also on a number of other nib brands. Both companies do terrific work. At the moment, this pen has a very special nib in it, a full flex steel nib from FP Nibs, which unfortunately the company is no longer offering. This is one of the best flexing nibs in my collection, and best of all, it came with an ebonite feed that does a very decent job keeping up with the ink demands of this nib. But even with the standard Yovo nib, this is a super fun, super useful pen that I highly recommend. And lastly, let's talk about the largest of these pocket pens, the Twisby Mini Vac. This pen is a little bit larger than the Mini, here's a comparison between the two. Being about 5 inches when capped, and when posted, with threading in the back, becoming 5 and 7 eighths inches. The ergonomics of this pen are very similar to the Mini, a little bit back heavy, but this time with a plastic section that's more grippy, making it more comfortable and secure. 
This pen is a vacuum filler, one of my favorite filling mechanisms, having an excellent ink capacity and a mechanism that seals off the ink reservoir here, making it safe for flight. This pen uses a very nice number five Yovo nib that can be switched out with very many different options. At the moment, I'm using it with the excellent number 5.5 Ultraflex nib from Fountain Pen Revolution. I love vacuum fillers, I like pocket pens, and I really like flex nibs, so this is one of my favorite pens. There are a few problems with it, however, all of them relatively minor. For example, ink has a tendency to leak under the grip section and can also leak under the clear inner cap. In a demonstrator pen, these things are annoyances, but speak to the manufacturing shortcomings of a pen, which at $60 shouldn't be overlooked. Furthermore, we have some cracking in the threads near the grip section and in the barrel near the piston knob. This makes me hesitate to put this pen in my pocket since with a vacuum filler, you're carrying a tremendous amount of ink. So out of the pocket pens in my collection, which ones do I recommend specifically for artists? Well, I think the Moonman Wonkai is a very useful little thing. It holds a lot of ink and seems to have none of the issues of dripping and burping that plague many eyedrop filling pens. The number 5 Moonman nib is absolutely awful, as to be expected, but it could be switched out for tons and tons of other better options. This pen is tiny, doesn't sacrifice much in terms of comfort and functionality, and is super versatile. At $20, it's also highly recommended, though you do have to factor in the cost of an extra nib. The Kaweco Brass Sport is also highly recommended. Again, I have a detailed review of this pen where I extol its many virtues, but to summarize, this is a pen that you can literally throw into your pocket with your keys and a pocket knife and not worry that it'll get scratched up. Plus, you can put a large number of vintage nibs into it, creating a perfect combo of vintage nib with an indestructible pen body. The aluminum version of the Kaweco Sport is also recommended. It's not quite as heavy, which is a good thing, but it's also not quite as sturdy feeling. The Opus 88 Fantasia is also a fantastic option. It is on the larger side of the pocket pen spectrum, but it's still relatively compact. Best of all, it takes a number 5 Yovo nib, which can be substituted for a bunch of other cool options. This pen has a ton of incapacity, and the sealing mechanism on this pen keeps it trouble free and safe for air travel. It is slightly more expensive than the two Twisbees, the Mini or the Mini Vac, but the build quality of this pen is superior and to my mind, worth the expense. If you're going the vintage route, the Pilot Elite is wonderful, just about the cheapest pen with a 14K gold nib you can buy. The nibs on these pens are wonderfully smooth and bouncy, the ergonomics are excellent, and it's no wonder that this was such a popular design in its day. And by the way, they're still making an updated version of this called the Pilot E95S. If you're going to choose between the two Twisby pocket pens, the Mini and the Mini Vac, I recommend getting the Vac. It's only a touch bigger than the Mini, but because it's a vacuum filler, as you can see, it has almost twice the incapacity. Vacuum fillers are also safe to take on an airplane, whereas this piston filler is not. The biggest advantage, however, is that the Vac uses a slightly larger number 5 nib, which is a much more common size, that allows you to switch it out for many other nib options. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this rather lengthy review. Uh, before I conclude, I just want to touch on what's missing from my pocket pen collection. Those really neat looking pocket pens made by small boutique companies like Sean Design, Gravitas, and Enso. Those pens do look really appealing, are made with all kinds of neat materials in a bunch of cool looking finishes, but I'm just not sure they're worth the expense. All of those pens look to be like cartridge converters that use inexpensive steel Yovo nibs or some other brand like Bach. So what you're paying for, and sometimes over $100, are really fancy machine tubes of plastic or metal. Sorry, but I would rather spend my money on a custom ground nib. If you disagree, let me know, and also feel free to recommend which pocket pen to buy, because I'm certainly not going to splurge on all three brands. Okay, I think we're done. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more pen reviews, art instruction, and other pen-related information. Thanks so much for watching, and see you all very soon. Bye for now.